Hey, it's here on the Metal Theologian. So, uh, we are listening to uh, Ty Pan, I think it is. I kind of came to this one late. It's kind of a stupid name, but um, I actually showed this cover to uh, Doom Paul not too long ago. He just uploaded a video, which you should also check out. And he said, uh, if you get, with this record, you get a free mask if you cut out the eyes, which I thought was pretty awesome. So anyway, it's a great record, though. It's four songs. I think they're Australian. It's 81, so it's kind of early. But, uh, yeah, just like a little sort of lesser-known one that even got pretty good distribution. I just ignored it, and I bet a lot of other people did, it too. So, All right, so we're going to do five random records. But first, we're going to have a little soda. And I'm going to do five random records out of the rock section, so Spencer's going to be free-handing today. So, uh, which one was mine? Oh, that one was mine. Okay, here. If you put your hands all over it, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, all right, let me get that one thing. Mm-hmm. So this is... Um, I just saw this. This is a stubborn soda. It's kind of a stupid logo, but um, it's black cherry with tarragon, which I've never heard of before, and um, it sounds pretty interesting. So when I saw this at the store, I pretty much jumped on it. Mm-hmm. I have some more Korean ones too. I'm gonna save those for next time. I'm gonna this and step on it. It's like stepping on a Lego. I'd say it's worse. Actually, no. I'd say stepping on a Lego is a lot worse than that. funny, remember how right before we filmed this I said I was hoping for a more medicinal tasting soda? Mm-hmm. Totally has that taste. Yeah. I really like this right now. In fact, I'm going to take that other one, my last one. We had to get a four pack. Hey, you can have it. What do you think? You know, I think you're right. I think there's a little medicinal thing, but you know something? It's weird because it's like there's an underlying blank. Mm. It almost tastes like like it's flavorful, and then like there's another sort of aftertaste that sort of creeps in, it sort of develops after you finish the sip, and it's like nothing, mm-hmm. like literally nothing. It's I, I don't get that. I, I don't I, get I, that. I, it's not a bad soda, but it's not my favorite uh, cherry soda. It's definitely not my favorite cherry soda, but um. It's what I was hoping for. Well, that's good. If it's hitting the spot, that's fine. It's uh, healthier than most of these, too. It's uh, only 90 calories per bottle. Oh, well, it loses that's 10 points sugar. right there. Yeah, totally. And it loses another 10 because there's no caffeine. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's caffeine in here. It is partially produced with genetic engineering, though. But it's yes, 20 points there. I've so, lost another 20. Yeah. That's weird, you know? Like, I wonder if that means that, like, um, the scientists were well-paid, like, yeah. in the lab, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, they weren't, like, sub-minimum, like, yeah. sub-minimum wage, like, children scientists, yeah. like, working out of a coal mine. <laughs> they are like, you know, grown-ups getting good money when they were doing the genetic engineering for the fucking black cherry soda with tarragon. Maybe they, like, genetically engineered, like, black cherry. Wait a minute, right? wait a minute. What? Fair trade certified, excluding water. What does that mean? Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, what is Read it. It, it well, says fair that? trade certified by fair. How would you fair trade certify water? I don't know, but how do you not fair trade certify water? Do you like have a slave child run to the river and get like some Flint, Michigan water? Maybe like they stole it from a third world country. Oh yeah. Like there's some Kenyan like dying right now because like they couldn't have water because these fuckers took it. It's like so some. It isn't even all that great. It's like they found some oasis in the Saharan desert and drained it, so no one yeah. drink. <laughs> yeah. So this kind of uh, you know something I can't really recommend this. I don't think it's bad. I'm glad you're enjoying it, but uh, you know I would drink it again if I were your house and you offered me one. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it either. It's just right now. Yeah. Okay. Hey, bub, you know it's pretty good with a soda, bub? What? Good, I've lost it. Oh, yeah. This is all you. Go ahead. Yep. Fourth of July, Fourth of July weekend exclusive. The last pack at CVS. Wrigley's Juicy Fruit America flavored gum. Now, it's actually America pop flavored gum, but it's better to say America flavored gum. And I say we crack it open right here if I can do it with one hand. I'll hold that thing. You got it? Yeah. Careful of the drink. 
I don't want to hold this for a second, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, smell that. It smells really good. It smells weird, man. It does. You know, it actually smells medicinal, almost. <laughs> again. <laughs> it's my lucky day. Let me smell it again. No. I don't want one, actually. Are you chewing, too? No, you're taking no, one. I don't want one. You've got to take I'm one. I'm taking the soda. Yeah, I know. You've got to take well, one. Oh, yeah, I'll take one. All right, thanks, Cole. Yeah. But, you know, it does smell like those uh, bomb pops, which is what we always called those when mm -hmm. I was a kid, not like... America That's pops. a nice blue It's the right color, color too. Look at yeah. that. And like if you hold it vertically, it'll sort of sink. Look at this. It's all flaccid. I wouldn't say it's very good, but it tastes like one. I don't think it's bad at all. I would chew this. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'll finish that if pack. If the soda tasted like this, I'd be more, actually more impressed with it. Alright. <laughs> Let's get started here. So I would recommend that, but you're never going to find it because I got the last package. <laughs> That's right. I already got 12. I'm really starting to like this. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It tastes like a freezer pop, though. Mm-hmm. All right, what's this? Oh, that's a classic right there. First Nectar album. Journey to the Center of the Eye. Uh, I don't believe this ever came out in the U.S. as a German press on Bellaphone. Uh, one thing about these Nectar records, I'm not going to play this because I assume everyone already knows Nectar. If you don't, just go listen to them. Uh, my personal favorite is actually this one. A Tab in the Ocean. That's sort of what got me interested in them was uh, King of Twilight, because I heard that um, Iron Maiden's cover of it on the B side of the Aces High 12 inch back, like in the mid 80s, when that thing came out. Shit, first half of the 80s, probably. 84 ish. So, um, yeah, so that tripped me out. And listen, if you. If you're into this band, I'd recommend you to take the trouble to get an import pressing of this. I think this is a UK press. If you get a UK press, though, or a um, German one, it has a different mix that's more crude than the American one on Passport that you kind of see around a little more commonly. I and mean, for that Passport release, they sort of smooth out all the edges, and it's a lot sort of wimpier sounding than this one. This is a lot rougher and sort of more rocking. This one I'm only aware of the one mix. Um, it sounds great though. This is a fucking really good record. Uh, just awesome, like really sort of Pink Floydish uh, psych stuff, like sort of psych prog stuff though. It's like psychedelic. It's, it's definitely prog, but it's like on the psychedelic side, and uh, just solid shit. Um, what else do I have? I have this one. This is a comp, but uh, it's kind of a cool one. It's German. So, all right. Um, so what's next? Ugh. Let's take a look. Is that your phone? Mm-hmm. It's a dorky sound. All right, seven. I should have put that record on because now we're just sort of standing around with no music because that one ended. So whatever comes out next, unless it's a total fucking turd, I'm not going to put it. By the way, I listened to that James Gang again after uh, the last time we did this, and it didn't really hit the spot very hard. I mean... I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the right mood or something, but I wasn't really digging it particularly. Alright, this is Gift. This is Blue Apple. And um, this is their second record, and this is, uh, this is German shit. 1974, and it's great. I'll put it on. Oh, God. Mm. Alright, here, let me take the thing. Alright, I'm going to pause. We just had a problem. All right, well, that sucked. Uh, Spencer kicked over his fucking soda, so he had to, like, clean all that shit up because it was kind of all over the place. It was, like, a third of the bottle or something. So I'm putting this on. I just left it out before I put it on because it's kind of cool-looking vinyl. Um, 
you know, it's like blue, but it has like that weird sort of shit in there. I don't know if it comes across on the camera, so whatever. Anyway, I don't know if there's a legitimate reissue this one. Originals are really expensive, just like all the good German shit. Um, this, uh, there's a newer reissue of this, though, I think on long hair. And this is just a great record, so it uh, gets big thumbs up from me. So, Blue Apple by Gift means poison in German, by the way, so it's not quite as corny as it sounds like. Alright. Oh, let me grab a drink and then we'll see what's next. Don't kick yours over again. Alright, so we've got two, right? Mm -hmm. Five. Can you come around? Mm -hmm. All right, this is uh, another Italian one. I've seen some Italian ones in my videos before, but uh, there you go. This is Dolce Aqua, I think, by Delirium. And, um, I don't know, this doesn't really live up to the cover. It's kind of an amazing cover. It's one of these trifold ones that you see on Italian records, which they take the trouble to include in the reissues. Just look at this. There's a cool prog record. It's not one I would have to start you off with if you're interested in getting into Italian prog, because there's better stuff. But it's a very listenable record. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, a lot of flute, as you can imagine with that right there. But you know, flutes, they can be wussy as hell depending on, or how, if you play them that way, but if you play them harsh, they can be pretty rocking too, so. Uh, surprisingly so, actually. It's uh, funny because it seems like such a lame instrument. But, uh, anyway, I haven't played this in a long time, honestly, but um, it's very Italian, very um, prog, like total prog, and uh, you know, not the heaviest thing ever, not as heavy as like, uh, you know, Alpha Taurus, let alone Il Rescue della Medaglia. But uh, it's a cool record. Not as good as Gift, though. All right, so that's three, right? Yeah. Oh! Thirteen. That's the third. That's the first one over there, I think. Well, there's six in that row, so. It's funny if you actually know where the numbers are now. All right, here we go. Oh, The Outsiders. I haven't played this in a long time. This kind of isn't really my speed that much anymore, but I kept all the foreign shit when I got rid of it. This is um, a Dutch band. Everything on the pseudonym label is Dutch, if you see that around. And uh, this was like, they started out as like a beat group, but they became more like a psychedelic band, and they put out this record, which I like a lot more. Uh, you know, it's still not the sort of thing I listen to a lot of anymore, but um, it's a really cool sort of like primitive psych record, this one. And this is, you know, it's it's beat, basically, but it's really good beat stuff, you know, I and mean, the songs are good. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably a little more complex than some of the stuff, too. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that, except that's kind of a weird looking guy right there. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Maybe he's a producer or something. So, originally 1967, so it's kind of a product of its time as far as what was happening in the Netherlands and continental Europe in general, but um, it's not a bad record. And there's some people who probably really like it who are watching, like, uh, I'll bet Zeke the Vinyl Geek would dig The Outsiders. Actually, I'll bet he knows The Outsiders. And um, I think I saw him, I think he showed a cubby in the Blizzards one once. And they're probably more obscure than The Outsiders if you're into the Dutch stuff, so. I'll bet Rob Paniques would like that record, too. All right, here we go. Last one. Let's see what it's gonna be. Number 15, so we're going back over here. All right, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, I'm not peeking. All right, what's this? Oh man. All right, this is a great fucking record. I'm gonna throw this on for a minute. This is Speed Glue and Shinky. Okay. That's that first record. 
and it's very bluesy. That kid uh, in the middle looks out of his mind. Yeah? Yeah. Who is that? Masayoshi Kabe? Except I don't think it is, because these two look like girls, and Shinky Chen and Joey Smith are not girls. So I think that's just some picture they found somewhere and kind of stuck their names on, which is kind of an awesome thing. Joey to Smith is pretty is a pretty great name. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the name Joe. Like, um, the guy from the Flower Traveling Band, the singer was Joey Amanaka. Like, I don't think his name was actually Joe. I think it was something else. And there's one record they did as Joe and Flower Traveling Band. Um... Yes, and I'm like dragging this out. But that record is so fucking good. Oh my god. That's a reissue. You're not going to find an original this. If you find an original this, it's probably going to set you back four figures. But, um... Yeah, so again, I don't know if this one's legit either. It's one of those Phoenix ones. But my god, dude, this is so awesome. <laughs> Joey Smith. Masayoshi Kabe. Yeah, most of the stuff with Shinky Chen is cool. There are a lot of, um... He was involved in a lot of these projects, these Japanese ones. And this is just really right time. Like I said, it's kind of bluesy. Um, but it's just great and rocking and heavy. And, um, yeah, and here we go. I got another one, too, that I'm going to show off. It's uh, the second one. Which came in this weird packaging. What was this one called? I don't think it was called. Yeah, this is Eve. I think this one was just called Speed Glue and Shinky. There we go, see? That's the three of them again. They're all grown up now. Yeah, and it had like this weird wrapper around. They actually like reproduced the original. And then, um... Yeah, like broke the tape on there carefully. Oops, shit. But on the actual records, it has like two jackets like that. Such a weird way to put the thing together, right? So, yeah, there we go. So this is actually the first one I got. I fell in love with it pretty much immediately. This came out on the Shaddix label. And a lot of what they put out is like hippie crap that I kind of don't give a shit about. But this, oh my god, man. Now, yeah, they did a couple other Japanese ones. They did a couple South American ones that are good, too. But they didn't do any of the best South American ones, like they did with the Japanese. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a Phoenix edition of this record, too. I know there's another reissue of it out there that doesn't have this whole, like, elaborate cover. I think it's just like a normal, like, gatefold double. But, um, yeah, this is fucking great, man. And I I'm only aware of those two records by Speed Glue and Shinky. If there are more, that's great. Tell me about them in the comments, by all means. And if you haven't heard of them before, look at that. Just in case you thought that, like, I had that name wrong or something. No, it's Speed, Glue, and Shanky. So, awesome. All right, well, that's five random records. Um, other than that, how long has this video been? About 16. Counting the first part? Hmm. Yeah, other than that, I've been listening to some, uh, to the old metal shit. I was actually busting out some of the private press stuff, so... Mm -hmm. Got Taste of Iron, we got Striker. Actually, about 20. Yeah, it's fine. We got Street Child, and that Stormtrooper, which is a great record. But I'll talk about this shit another time. Let's see what else we've got here. Iron Gypsy. There you go, you can see I was reading the eyes. Iron Hawk. Yeah. Alright, well, thanks for tuning in, and, uh, until next time.